Dan Bongino is a former New York City Police Department officer. He joins us tonight. Um, so, Dan, given the fact set that we have now, three hours and 10 minutes after it happened, what does it add up to, would you say? Yeah, Tucker, it adds up to a new normal and a disturbing new normal at that. You know, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, AQAP, terror-affiliated groups that use this tactic figured out post 9-11, Tucker, that what's the sense of spending, you know, half a million to a million dollars developing a flight training program, learning how to fly a plane, if you can cause an equal amount of terror impact in Nice, Barcelona, Berlin, and now New York City by running people down with a rental truck. And Tucker, the added benefit for these animals, these savages, is that these kind of tactics, renting a rental truck and mowing people down like an animal, doesn't leave that many investigative footprints. I mean, what are we going to have, you know, a do not rent list? I mean, it's just not possible. Meanwhile, learning how to fly and doing all that other stuff leaves behind some investigative breadcrumbs we can track. This is very, very difficult to stop. I mean, how would you even go about trying to stop it at the law enforcement level? Well, that's good because I don't like to come on your show and just complain. There is a way to at least hopefully make a dent. I think the country would be astounded if they realized me being a former federal agent and a former New York City police officer. You know, how few people of interest are under active physical surveillance? Now, listen, I'm a libertarian at heart. I think we've wasted a lot of time on mass data collection from people who have nothing to do with anything. But right. we've, we've, fell in, we've fallen in love, Tucker, with SIGINT, signal intelligence, collecting emails and social media, and we've fallen out of love with old school shaking of the trees in communities, an old expression for going into communities and developing high quality investigative sources. It's how we broke up the mob. It's how we can do it against this radical Islamic ideology. We're never going to stop this by being firemen afterwards. We have to be arsonists. We have to start the investigative fires in advance because these kinds of attacks don't leave that many footprints if you don't have the sources to cut them off in advance. But you've got an entire American political party organized to prevent that from happening. Uh, well, not only that, you have an entire American political party committed to open borders. This, I, I mean, seriously, this is, this is not, this is a, a, a multipolar problem here. So yes, you, you have an American political party as well. Let me throw another one out there. That's absolutely committed to the idea that we should never surveil, God forbid, in a mosque because that may upset some people. Listen, nobody's saying anywhere, no credible personality anywhere is saying that all Muslims are involved in terrorism. That's absurd. That's a leftist stupid talking point. But a, a mosque talker should not either be some kind of protected space. You and I both know if it was a Christian church professing that they wanted to blow up something, that of course law enforcement would be in there, thankfully so. But this has just gotten this PC society is sickening and it's damn dangerous to American citizens. And thank God we have a president who finally understands the threat, too, by the way. I mean, look where we'd be now if we still had this apologizing and not using the word terrorism anymore. Ha have surveillance techniques changed in the last 10 years? They, they have, I, I th in my humble opinion, for the worse. We've fallen in love with, with electronic interception, and we've fallen out of love with the idea of old-school physical surveillance. Right. Tucker, we don't have the capability right now to watch people who absolutely need to be watched. This is the entire known wolf problem, not lone wolf, known wolf. As uh, Patrick Poole from PJ Media calls him, and he's right. We, we, so law enforcement's known about some of these people. Now, we don't know that in this case, to be clear, but there's no question in past cases we've known about people who have not been surveilled. We've got to watch some of these people. Well, so let me ask you a, a law enforcement question. I mean, probably not two hours after this happened, the governor of New York said pretty conclusively this was a lone wolf. We don't believe he has ties to any larger group or movement. I don't know if that's true or not. How could he know if that was true or not so soon after the crime? He doesn't know that, Tucker, and that's a nonsense talking point. There are no more lone wolves. Let's do, throw that term into the dustbin of history. There are no more lone wolves. They have moved now to a franchise-type model where, where they understand that individuals can go out and just buy into their ideology on the Internet, and ISIS and these other groups will lay claim to it. There's no such thing as a lone wolf. They're just embedded into the ideology through a different means than personal radicalization, which we had in the past. Forget lone wolf. That's, a, that's, a, that's an ideological talking point to make you believe that this is an isolated problem when it's not. It's a systemic problem, and we all know it. That's a, that's a political talking point, not a law enforcement one. Yeah.
in a world with an internet, it doesn't make any sense. Dan Bongino, thank no. you for that, as always.